Right at 7 o'clock right here on WITN, you can catch a local man trying to win some big bucks on Jeopardy. Andy Kingsbury, who lives in Winterville and works in Greenville as a radio producer, is one of the three contestants. Kingsbury went to Los Angeles for the taping back in August and says he wouldn't have traded that experience for anything. Now, we don't want to spoil the outcome, but we will tell you Kingsbury is on the show Friday as well. Actually, that's at 7.30 tonight. Wheel of Fortune is on oh. first. So, oh, but that's tonight. <laughs> Hello, Greenville, North Carolina. This is Andy Kingsbury. I'm a radio producer, and watch me produce some excitement on Jeopardy. This is Jeopardy. Please welcome today's contestant, a graduate student from Virginia Beach, Virginia, Claire Slavovsky, a radio producer from Winterville, North Carolina, Andy Kingsbury. And our returning champion, an attorney from Altadena, California, Keith Thorell, whose two-day cash winnings total $29,600. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Trevec. Hey, Johnny. Thank you, folks. Welcome to our show. Claire and Andy, the newcomers to Challenge Keith, two-time champion. Good luck to all three of you. Let's get right into it today. Some great categories awaiting you. One daily double, of course, in this first round of play. And here's what you're looking at. A in science, each correct response, beginning with that letter of the alphabet. We're going to deal with the popular series Beverly Hills 90210 with Bush's nicknames. Accent Appalooza. Sounds fruity. And palindromic words, words that are the same coming and going. Keith, where do we start? A in science 200. This term for a plant or animal with a marked deficiency of pigmentation comes from the Latin for white. Claire. What is albinoism? Right. Beverly Hills 90210 for 200. Here's one of the stars, Tori Spelling. Melrose Place was a spin-off from 90210. The character of Jake was introduced on 90210 as a friend of this bad boy. Claire. Who is Dylan? Dylan is right. Beverly Hills 90210 for 400. Before she was an Oscar winning million dollar baby, she was single mom Carly. Claire. Who is Hillary Swank? Right. Beverly Hills 600. Let's go back to Tori. On the series finale of 90210, my character Donna finally married David Silver, played by this three named actor. Keith. Who is Brian Austin Green? Correct. 90210 800. He made it big as the clean cut Brandon. Andy. Who's Jason Priestley? Yes. Palindromes for 200, please, Alex. The night before a holiday. Keith. What is Eve? Yeah. A in science, 400. After five minutes in lemon juice, the coin is shiny because the lemon's this works chemically to remove the oxide. Claire. What is acid? Yes, that's right. Beverly Hills, 90210 for 1,000. We'll wrap it up with Tori. On 90210, the gang hung out at this restaurant where Nat dispensed advice with the pie. Claire. What is the peach pit? Good for another thousand. A in science, 600. The formula for this hormone is C9H13NO3. Can you feel it speeding up your heartbeat? Claire. What is adrenaline? Correct. A in science, 800. Answer. Daily double. And you're off to a very good start, young lady. $2,000 more than Keith or Andy. 2,000. Okay, here is the clue. John? Focused ultrasound waves are propelling the water here at Ole Miss's cutting edge NCPA, National Center for Physical Vs. Claire? What is agua? No, what, what is acoustics? Acoustics, you heard the sound. So. We have a three-way tie for the lead right now, but you have command of the board. A in science for 1,000. This inert gas is atomic number 18. You should not search any further. Writers are trying to get cutesy with argon. Argon, not N-A-U-T. Argon, not, not search any. Yep, we won't try that again. Claire? Uh, sounds fruity 200. In a 1950s hit song, it's where I found my thrill. Andy. What is Blueberry Hill? Correct. Palindrome's 400, please. It's the word when keeping silent. Andy. 
Oh. But it's mom. Oh, you got it in just in the nick of time. Palindrome 600. It can be a joke or a restraint in someone's mouth to prevent him from talking. Keith. What is a gag? That's it. Fruity 400. Garden Grove and Costa Mesa are in this West Coast County, formally organized in 1889. Andy? What is orange? Orange County is correct, and that takes you to 1800. Takes us to our first break. So we'll pause for these messages, of course. Claire Slavowski is a graduate student from Virginia Beach, Virginia, and once had to play a cancer victim on stage or uh, stage. on film? Stage. It was stage, yes. And you went the whole route <laughs> on this. You shaved I your did. head? I did, yes. And more guys hit on you when you had your head shaved than was the case with a full head of hair? It's true. <laughs> Explain that to me. I well, it might have been the type of guys. It was guys with multiple piercings and tattoos and dreadlocks and things like that, so. My kind of guy, in other <laughs> yeah. words. Yes, okay, a future Jeopardy champion. Andy Kingsbury is a radio producer from Winterville, North Carolina, fell asleep on a train in Germany. And what happened? Uh, well, I had a German rail pass. This was a number of years ago, and it allows you to take the rails anywhere in Germany, except I fell asleep, and the, uh, the ticket taker nudged me awake and said, tickets, s'il vous plaît. So I showed him my ticket, and then I got it back, and then I came to and realized, see the place, French. Yeah. I must not be in Germany anymore. <laughs> so I jumped, off the, uh, I jumped off the train and tried to figure out where I was. I was in Belgium, and I had to jump back onto the train without a Belgium rail pass or whatever they call it. And so I decided to hide in the bathroom so I wouldn't get in trouble until I heard nice German-sounding city names, and I knew that I was in the right place. It was Tuesday. That's why you were in Belgium. <laughs> And all of the German porters and the conductors were wondering about that American who was in the John for eight and a half hours. <laughs> Keith Thorell is our champion. Married your high school sweetheart, huh? Yes, I did. What were the uh, circumstances? Well, uh, during our wedding, my wife accidentally blew out the uh, Unity candle. Um, and we heard Snickers in the audience, realized what happened, went back and lit it, and we've now been married eight years and have two kids. That's not bad luck. Andy. You get to select as we continue right now. A lot of clues still in play. I'll try palindromes for 800, please, Alex. All right, a legal document that transfers ownership of land. Claire. What is a deed? You got it. Sounds fruity 600. It's a hydraulic crane with bucket attachment for fixing telephone lines or pruning trees. Claire. What is a cherry picker? Correct. Sounds fruity 800. In 1949's The Third Man, Orson Welles played this character, an evil black marketeer. Andy. Who's Lime? Harry Lime, correct. Uh, fruit for 1,000, please. In 1995, it was moved to avoid Kiribati or Kiribati. And that was the international date line. That's why it sounds fruity. Andy, back to you. Palindromes, 1,000, please. Suggest a job for Ophelia in Hamlet. Claire. What is a nun? Nun, correct. Accent of Palooza, 200. I'm going to hop in my Volvo for a trip from Yokmok to Shobda in this country. Keith? What is Sweden? Yes. Accent 400. With places like Berwick upon Tweed and Newcastle upon Tyne, we'd have to be in this country. What? What? <laughs> Keith? What is the United Kingdom? Uh, be more specific. What is England? Yes. Accent 600. Taranto, we're not talking Canada, is in this country along with Anzio and Padua. Claire. What is Italy? Yes. Accent 800. No woman, no cry, no problem in this country from St. Anne's Bay to Port Maria. Claire. What is Jamaica? Man, yes. Accent 1000. Oh, Mike Myers knows if it's not Grantonon Spee and Kakubri in this country, it's crap. Oh, Claire. What is Scotland? Yes, I've hurt my throat. <laughs> Go again, minute to go. Uh, Bush's nicknames, 200. W calls this world leader Pooty Poot. Claire? Who is Putin? Yes. 400. The press came up with Fredo for this ex attorney general. Maybe he wanted to take him fishing. Claire? Who is Gonzalez? Yes. 600. This female senator's nickname is Ali, as in Muhammad. And that would be the senator from California, Barbara Boxer. Claire? 800. Brownie was Bush's famous nickname for the director of this from 2003 to 2005. 
Andy. What's CIA? No. Remember the president said, doing a good job, Brownie. FEMA after Katrina. And now the $1,000 clue. This secretary of education is also known as La Margarita. Andy. Who's spelling? That's right. Secretary of Education, who appeared as a contestant on Celebrity Jeopardy. And that takes you into second place. And that means that Keith, with $2,000, goes first in Double Jeopardy. Right after this. Welcome back. Double Jeopardy time. Two daily doubles in this round of play. And Keith, you select from these categories. First off, conductors, followed by literary before and after. French class, Roman and Martin's laughing. <laughs> Where do we start? Roman 400. This largest outdoor theater of ancient Rome was dedicated in 80 AD. Andy. What's the Colosseum? Correct. Uh, I'll have laughing 400. Number 10 on his top 10 signs, your monkey is a genius, won 30 grand on Jeopardy's Monkey Week. Claire. Who's Letterman? Right. Roman 800. In the Roman Empire, one of these equaled 1,000 paces and on roads was marked with a special stone. Keith. What's a mile? Yes. 1,200 Roman. He died before he could complete the Aeneid, which he wanted destroyed. It was finished by two pals. The Aeneid was written by Virgil. Keith, back to you. 1,600 Roman. From the 300s to the mid-200s B.C., Rome beat up on these darn folks who lived in what is now Tuscany and Umbria. Andy. Who are the Etruscans? Yes, the Etruscans. Uh, I'll have Roman 2000. Answer. Daily double. First in the round. Ah. And what will you do? Let's try 2000, Alex. All right, for the lead. Here is the clue. In 71 BC, this great man tried to take credit for ending Spartacus's slave revolt. Maybe him and circumstance. Who is Pompey? Yes, pomp and circumstance. I said the writers would not try that again, and obviously they did. You go. Uh, well, let's try before and after 400, Alex. A mouse-like boy grows up with Meg, Joe, Amy, and Beth. Claire. Who is Stuart Little Women? Yes. Literary before and after 800. Anglo-American author of Daisy Miller's Life of Samuel Johnson. Who is Henry James Boswell? Back to you, Claire. Literary 1200. Revolutionary Thomas Paine pamphlet about men and marriage in a Jane Austen work. Claire. What is common sense and sensibility? Yes. Literary 1600. Herman Woke and Leo Tolstoy team up for this epic tome about World War II and the Napoleonic Wars. Keith. What is the winds of war and peace? That's right. Literary 2000. Tough Leon Uris novel about fighting the Japanese and fighting apartheid in South Africa. What is Battle Cry the Beloved Country? Keith, let's go somewhere else. Conductors 400. In concert, Stokowski would dramatically toss these aside to show that he could conduct from memory. Claire? What are scores? That's it. Conductors 800. Marin Alsop made news in 2005 as the first one of these to lead a major American symphony orchestra. Claire? What is a woman? That's it. Conductors 1200. Answer? <laughs> double. Your turn to do yourself some good. Uh, 1,200. Okay. Here is the clue. Willem Mengelberg and Edward van Bynum have been chief conductors of this city's Konzertgebouw. What is Berlin? No, I picked the wrong one. Wrong country. Amsterdam. Amsterdam in the Netherlands. All right. You're at 8,200, and you select. Conductors, 1,600. On CDs with Canada's National Arts Center Orchestra, Pinkus Zuckerman conducts and plays this. Claire. What is the violin? You are right. Conductors 2000. This Finnish-born leader of the LA Philharmonic has also composed such works as the Cello Concerto Mania. Keith? Who is Salonen? Essa Pekka Salonen, correct. And Martins, 400. He ran for president three times, but won only the first time. Andy? Who is Martin Van Buren? Right. Martins, 800. In 1505, this theologian abandoned his legal studies and entered a monastery. By 1507, he was a priest. 
Clear. Who is Martin Luther? Correct. Uh, Martin's 1200. This automaker features the Vanquish S and V8 Vantage models, and really, 007, do be careful with them. Keith? What is Aston Martin? Correct. Martin's 1600. In 1933, he became chief of staff to Deputy Fuhrer Rudolf Hess. And they're still looking for him, Martin Borman. Uh, back to you, Keith. Martin's 2000. Chapter 25 of this Dickens novel has the line, he'd make a lovely corpse. And that would be Martin Chuzzlewit. Keith. Laughing, 800. From this 30th century set Fox cartoon, I always feared he might run off like this. Why, why, why didn't I break his legs? But his future, Rama. Keith. Laughing 1200. Ah, here's Jason Alexander with a clue about Seinfeld. The sea was angry that day, my friends, when I saved one of these mammals by removing a golf ball from it. And yes, it was a Titleist. Keith. What is a whale? Yes. Laughing 1600. Of this Icelandic singer's Oscar dress, Steve Martin said, I was going to wear my swan, but they're so last year. Andy. Who's Bjork? Yes. Uh, Laughing 2000. As Al Chervik in Caddyshack, he said, Oh, this is your grandson, huh? Now I know why tigers eat their young. Andy. Who's Dangerfield? Rodney Dangerfield. Less than a minute now. French, 400, please. Fin de siècle refers specifically to the ending of one of these time periods. Andy. What's a century? Correct. French, 800. In French, the English channel is called la manche, meaning this part of a shirt or coat. Andy. What's a sleeve? Sleeve, yes. French, two, uh, uh, 1,200. This nine-letter noun is taken from the old French for spy. Andy. What is espionage? Correct. French, 1,600. Literally, a la mode doesn't mean with ice cream, but this two-word phrase that's a Time, Inc. fashion magazine. A la mode means in style. And now the $2,000 clue. Klondike Cat knows that this hyphenated trait, meaning tact or social grace, is everywhere. Andy? What is savoir faire? Is everywhere. Yes, indeed. You bumped yourself up with that correct response to 15,200. And here comes Final Jeopardy. Notable women. Make a wager. We'll come back and reveal the clue after this. We're looking for a notable woman. And here's the clue. In 1963, she said, I feel as though I'm suddenly on stage for a part I never rehearsed. 30 seconds. Good luck. Wagering is going to be a very important factor in determining our champion today. Keith, we come to you first. You had 8,800. You wrote down, who is Jackie Kennedy? And that is incorrect. It will cost you 1,300 only. That'll drop you down to 7,500. Let's go down to Claire Slobowski. She had 10,600, and she wrote down, who is Jackie Kennedy? And we know that's wrong. Cost, oh boy, everything. You have no money. Let's go to Andy Kingsbury, 15,200. And he wrote down, who is Jackie Kennedy? No, we were looking for the lady who followed Jackie Kennedy, Lady Bird Johnson. Remember the tragedy in Dallas. Going to cost you how much? 6,001. You dropped to 91.99, but you are the new <laughs> Jeopardy champion. <laughs> Try and show some <laughs> happiness. <laughs> we'll see him and you tomorrow. So long. Promotional consideration provided by...
They took home nearly $10,000 on Jeopardy last night. Tonight, this Winterville man is back for more on the game show. The Country Rover checked in with him next. It's about as far as you can go in the world of knowledge-based game shows, becoming a contestant on Jeopardy. Country Rover Tom Skinner caught up with a Pitt County man who knows what it's like to play America's ultimate game of trivia. Andy Kingsbury spends most of his time working as a radio producer in Greenville, but recently, after a very rigorous vetting process, the Winterville resident became a contestant on Jeopardy. It's very fast-paced. Everything's happening very fast and coming at you uh, at about a million miles an hour. Kingsbury traveled to Los Angeles in August to tape the two shows he appears on. And he says contestants aren't briefed on any of the questions or categories. The first time I saw them was when the tape was rolling and I was sitting there with my buzzer and I was going to try to answer them in a few seconds. And when they reeled off the first two or three, I, I said, I'm going to get in trouble because I have no idea about these ones. But then they filled it out. Well, maybe I have a fighting chance or I'll just uh, see what I can do. I'll just do my best. And Andy's best on Thursday's episode of Jeopardy earned him $9,199 and an invite back on Friday's show. It's, 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 it makes for a very exhilarating, draining, uh, exhausting, but really, really fun day. It was very exciting, and uh, I'm glad I had the opportunity to do it. it and even after playing on America's Ultimate Trivia Game Show, Andy says he still has plenty of fight left in him for another game show. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to try to try my luck on another game show. The only problem is there aren't too many of them that are filming in Greenville or anything like that. So, so for now, Kingsbury is happy watching these two episodes of Jeopardy and critiquing his performance. In Greenville, Tom Skinner, The Country Rover. Kingsbury works at Atlantic Coast Communications in Greenville, a radio, internet, and television production company that serves churches nationwide. And he will be on Jeopardy again this evening at 7.30 right here on WITN. Hey, Eastern Carolina, you've got a local contestant on Jeopardy tonight. And I just witnessed a miracle. I actually won at Jeopardy to see if I can repeat the feat. Tune in to Jeopardy and cheer for your hometown favorite tonight at 7.30 on WITN. This is Jeopardy. Today's contestants are a physician from Ann Arbor, Michigan, Jen Cannon. An engineer from Folsom, California, Jason Ross. And our returning champion, a radio producer from Winterville, North Carolina, Andy Kingsbury, whose one-day cash winnings total $9,199. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek. Thanks, Johnny. You gotta love a champion who gets excited over his victory. And that was the case with Andy on yesterday's program. Even though he didn't come up with the correct response, he had the most money at the end, and that's what counts. So he defends now against the Jays. Jason and Jen, good luck to you. Here we go, Jeopardy round. Let's do it. The categories in play are as follows. Drew Barrymore loves music. Signs and symbols. Flowers. Testing, testing, literary geography, and finally, anagrammed animals. Annie, Andy, start us off. Anagrammed animals, 200, please, Alex. An early riser, sore rot. Jason. What is a rooster? That's right. Signs and symbols for 200. One of these one-horned mythical beasts, long a symbol of Scotland, graces Prince William's coat of arms. Jason. What is a unicorn? That's it. Symbols for 400. I don't mean to horn in, but this first sign of the zodiac is represented by a symbol that looks like curved horns. Andy. What is Aries? Aries, the An ram. Anagrams, 400. A marsupial by a wall. Jason. What is a wallaby? Correct. Anagrammed animals for 600. A swinging ape, big knob. Andy. What is a gibbon? Yeah. Anagrams, 800. An ermine is one. See law. Jen. What's a weasel? That's right. Signs and symbols for 600. This symbol of idolatry described in Exodus 32 has become a byword for materialism. Jen. What's a golden calf? That's right. Symbols for eight. The Democratic Party's symbol dates back to 1828, when this man was called a jackass in his run for the presidency. And his name was Andrew Jackson. 
Jen, back to you. Uh, symbols for a thousand. The double eagle was a symbol of Mother Russia long before it represented this family that came to power in 1613. Jen? Who are the Romanovs? Right. I'll take flowers for 200. Holding reserves through winter, these globular underground buds let flowers like Narcissus bloom early. Jen? What are bulbs? Bulbs, that's it. Flowers for four. This large group of flowering plants attracts serious devotees, like those who pay $10,000 for one Peruvian plant. Jason? What are orchids? Correct. Flowers for 600. The flower seen here is called the bridal this, also what it may be part of. Jen? What's a bouquet? No. Jason? What is a veil? No. It's called the bridal wreath. Reef. Jason, back to you. Anagrammed animals for a thousand. The world's largest rodent. Pay a crab. Jason. What is a capybara? That's right. Um, Litter geography for 200. In chapter eight of this novel, Atlanta is very exhilarating and temporarily even better than Tara. Jen? What's gone with the wind? You got it? Um, flowers for 800. And so there, the Daily Double. Wondered why we went away from it a few moments ago, but it could benefit you a great, benefit you a great deal, Jen. I'll wager um, a thousand. All right, here is the clue. A bouquet of a dozen sink foils ought to have a total of this many petals. What, 60? 60 is right. And with that, you add your lead and you take us to our first break for these commercials. We'll return in a moment. Under the heading of Why Can't These Things Ever Happen to Me, Jen Cannon, who is now a physician from Ann Arbor, Michigan, in high school earned varsity letters in swimming, girls' water polo, and boys' water polo. I bet you a lot of guys tried out for that team. No, not, not exactly. Uh, I changed high schools in, mm -hmm. in school, and the school that I changed, uh, transferred to didn't have a girls' water polo team. I'd lettered previously, and so I played on the boys' team and managed to earn a varsity letter. Good for you. Now, water polo can be a very rough sport. The guys underwater are pulling at each other's trunks and stuff like that. Do they do that to girls as well? Just as hard. <laughs> <laughs> Under the heading of why can't these things ever happen to, well, <laughs> Jason Ross, engineer from Folsom, California, had a problem, wanted to surprise his fiance with a special vacation in France, but she didn't have a passport. That's true. It's actually a little worse than that. We're actually going to, I was taking her to Paris to propose to her. Ah. But then the conversation, it, it's hard to make it a surprise when it goes from, hey, you should go to the passport office and get your passport someday to go on Monday, get it done, pay the expedite fee. <laughs> it's not exactly subtle at that point. <laughs> okay, I love it. Andy Kingsbury is a radio producer from Winterville, North Carolina. This man has done some traveling. He was once in Swaziland. That's right. Which is in Southeast Africa. Mm -hmm. House sitting. And he was not a particularly good house sitter, <laughs> I don't think, because what happened? Uh, they broke in while I was asleep and they stole the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of a quiet crime. I can understand how you would sleep through somebody, four guys trying to lug a 150 pound refrigerator, banging it around in the kitchen and... I foiled their repeat attempt to uh, take away a frying pan and a toaster and a desk drawer with crayons in it. How did you foil their attempt to do that? By screaming? I hit the alarm and uh, it made a little bit more noise than I would, although I can scream pretty high pitched. Okay, if I'm enough. good for you. All right, Jen, you get to pick again as we continue right now. All right, I'll take flowers for a thousand. Last clue in that column. This Mayflower of the Buttercup family has a C version, too. And that would be the anemone. B Jen, back to you. Okay, I'll take uh, testing for 200. In 1963, the US, USSR, and United Kingdom agreed not to test these above ground. Jason. What are nuclear weapons? Right. Uh, testing for 400. Patch tests and scratch tests are done to see if you have this type of hypersensitivity reaction to a substance. Jen. Was an allergic reaction. That's correct. I'll take testing for 600. Here's Jimmy at the Consumer Reports testing facility. Headphones are tested by simulating the major resonances of the oracle and this other main part of the outer ear. Jen. What's the eardrum? No. Jason. What is the pinna? No. 
What is the external ear or the auditory canal? Back to you, Jen. Testing for eight. In AI's Turing test, a person asks questions of two subjects and has to determine which one is not human, but this. Jen. What is artificial intelligence or a robot? Nope. Jason. What is a computer? Computer, yes. Uh, testing for a thousand. This five-letter test restricts government programs to those in the direst financial need. Jason. What is a means test? Good. Uh, geography for 400. In the preface to the Moonstone, Vishnu commands three Brahmins in this country to guard the title gem night and day. Jason. What is India? Yes. Uh, geography for 600. In Pride and Prejudice, Mrs. Bennett says, the country is a vast deal pleasanter than this city. Jen? What's London? You got it. I'll take geography for eight. In chapter five of The Sun Also Rises, horse chestnut trees are in bloom in this city's Luxembourg Gardens. Jason. What is Paris? Yes. Uh, geography for 1,000. It's the first river mentioned in the legend of Sleepy Hollow. Andy. What's the Hudson River? You are right with a minute to go. Uh, Drew Barrymore, 1,000. 1,000. All right. Here is Drew herself with the clue. Some of the most romantic songs of all time, including Embraceable You, were written by these brothers. Andy. What is the Everly Brothers? Oh, no. Jason or Jen? Or George and Ira Gershwin? You pick again, Andy. Uh, 800, Drew. Here she is. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Swings with the lyrics of Irving Mills and the music of this jazz man. Andy. Who's Ellington? Duke Ellington, correct. Drew, 600. The ever-popular Evergreen has lyrics by Paul Williams and music by this singer who introduced it in A Star is Born. Andy. Who's Christofferson? No. Jason or Jen? Who is Barbara Streisand? Andy? Wrong one. Uh, 400, please. Okay. 400. The music and lyrics of these famous brothers posed the feverish question, how deep is your love? Andy. What are the Bee Gees? That's it. 200, please. Last clue from Drew. Bernie Taupin was a teenager when he answered an ad looking for songwriters. This future partner of his did the same, and the rest is rock and roll history. Jason? Who is Alton John? You got it, and that takes you to 4,400. You're in the lead, and Andy gets to go first in double jeopardy. When we come back, we'll start that round following this. All right, champ, you go first. Double jeopardy round. Here are the categories. U.S. history. Next. Movie comedy quotes. You have to ID the film, of course. We have a few gentlemen of Verona. We'll deal with languages, food, and finally, tea time. Notice the quotation marks. Uh, let's lighten it up. Movie comedy, 400. A Wally World guard. Sorry, folks, park's closed. Moose out front should have told you. Jen? What's vacation? Yes. I'll take food for 400. In the early 1900s, this all-American gelatin dessert was given out at Ellis Island. Jen. What's jello? Right. Food for 800. Poblano is one type of this dark Mexican sauce made with chiles and chocolate. Jen. What's mole? Mole, yes. Food for 1,200. California's green globe is a popular variety of this veggie with an edible heart. Jen. What's an artichoke? Correct. Food for 16? Answer. There you go, just like that. And you're in the lead with 5,600. Uh, how much are you going to risk, Jen? I'll wager 2,000. All right, here is the clue. The coarser maison type of this dish is basically a fancy meatloaf. Jen? What is steak? <laughs> no, what is pate? Pate maison. So you're now at 3,600, but there's plenty of time. Select again. I'll take food for 2,000. In 1952, Lipton came out with a dehydrated version of this dish that's been used in countless recipes. Andy. What is onion soup? Yes. Yes. Tea time, Me 400, please. The tea in ATM is this employee whom you don't need if you use an ATM. Jason. What is the teller? Right. Uh, tea time for 800. In some religious beliefs, it's the process of transference of a soul into another body at death. 
And the T this time is transmigration. Jason, go again. T time for 1,200. It's a sustained pull applied mechanically to correct fractured or dislocated bones. Jen. What's traction? Right. Uh, let's go to languages for four. Grammar schools originally emphasized the study of the grammar of these two ancient languages. Andy. What are Latin and Greek? That's it. T, 1600, please. Another name for a billy club or a policeman's baton. Jen. What's a truncheon? Correct. T for 2000. It can mean to veer or to go sour as applied to milk. Jason. What is turn? Turn, 2000 more for you. Languages for 800, please. Spoken by 45 million, it's a descendant of the language used in Kievan Rus from the 10th to 13th centuries. Andy. What is Ukrainian? Correct. Languages 2000, please. The main language of Kosovo, an autonomous province of Serbia, is this language of a neighboring Muslim country. Jen? What's Bosnian? No. Andy. What is Albanian? That's it. Languages 1600, please. Bai Nai, or where are you going, is a greeting in this Asian language whose name also ends in A-I. Jen? What's Thai? Correct. Languages for 12. Pomeranian and Silesian are major dialects of this West Slavic language. Andy. What is Czech? No. Jason. What is Croatian? No. Jen's not going to ring in. Correct response. What is Polish? Jen, back to you. You're in the lead. All right. Uh, let's take a few gentlemen of Verona for 400. 20th century theologian Romano Guardini was born in Verona, but studied at the University of Tübingen in this country. Andy. What is Germany? Correct. Movie comedy 800. I'm sorry, son, but you have me confused with someone else. My name is Roger Murdoch. I'm the co-pilot. Jen? What's airplane? Right. Uh, gentleman of Verona for eight. One famous work by the 16th century artist Paolo Veronese was of the marriage at this town, site of Jesus' first miracle. Jason? What is Cana? Yes. Um, U.S. history for 400, please. At Jefferson Davis's suggestion in 1855, Congress bought some of these animals from Egypt for the Southwest. Andy. What is camels? Right. Movies, to, uh, 1,200. We've been going about this all wrong. This Mr. Stay Puff's okay. He's a sailor. He's in New York. Andy. What is Ghostbusters? Correct. Movie comedy, 1,600. Mongo, only pawn in Game of Life. Jason. What's Blazing Saddles? Right. U.S. history for 800. Franklin Pierce's hope for glory in this war ended when he was thrown from his horse and injured. Andy. What is the Mexican-American War? Correct. Movie comedy, 2000. Dear Lord, we thank you for this bountiful harvest. My two beautiful sons, Walker and Texas Ranger. Jen. What's Talladega, Talladega Nights? Correct. The Ballad of Ricky Bobby. You got it. I'll take U.S. History for 12. Answer. The other Daily Double. And look at the scores. A mere 800 separating you from Jason. Okay, um... I'll wager a thousand. All right, here is the clue. Founded in 1886, it became the major rival of the Edison Electric Company. What is General Electric? No, you picked the wrong one. What is Westinghouse? Westinghouse. Less than a minute to go now. Okay, um, Verona for 1,200. Verona-born tenor Nino Martini performed brilliantly at this New York City location from 1933 to 1946. Jen. What's the Metropolitan Opera? Right. I'll take Verona for 1600. Born in Verona, Gaetano Rossi was famous for writing more than 120 of these opera storylines. Jen. What are librettos? Yes. Verona for two. Verona's Giovanni Zenatello was, you guessed it, an opera singer and was the first Lieutenant Pinkerton in this opera. Jason. What is HMS Pinafore? No. Jen. What's Madame Butterfly? Correct. History for 2000. Charles Evans Hughes was picked to represent the United States at the Permanent Court of Arbitration in this city in 1926. Jason. What is the Hague? Good. Now uh, the history for 16. In November of 1903, troops from the USS Nashville were used to stop Colombians from reaching this now capital city. Jen? What's Panama City? You are right, and that takes you to 14,200. The lady is competitive. He has the lead, Jason 8,000, Andy 8,400. Here comes Final Jeopardy that will determine the champ today. Motown Singers, all right. Our contestants today will receive the Jeopardy DVD home game system. 
Now you can play America's favorite quiz show anytime you want. It's the Jeopardy home game. Pop in the DVD. With three wireless buzzers, you're ready to play. Experience all the excitement of Jeopardy, including daily doubles, final Jeopardy, video clues, and more. Hosted by Alex... Good category for vinyl. Motown singers. Here's the clue, players. He added an E to his last name to avoid being teased. 30 seconds. Good luck. Jason, we come to you first. Did you come up with the right Motown singer? Who is Chuck Berry? Sorry, incorrect. It'll cost you 3,700, dropping you down to 4,300. Let's go to Andy, our champ. 8,400 going in, and he came up with Marvin Gaye, and you are right, of course. There's the E on the end of it, and you add 5,801. You're in the lead now with 14,201 as we come to Jen Cannon. She's smiling, I bet you I know why because she came up with a correct response and ri risked more than a dollar. $2,601. $16,801 for Jen Cannon, who's our new champion. Enjoy the weekend, Jen. We'll see you here on Monday on Jeopardy. Go on. Promotional consideration provided by... It is one of the most watched TV game shows in the United States. And it's one that you can see right here on WITN. And one man from Winterville tells us about his first-hand experience on the show next. It's about as far as you can go in the world of knowledge-based game shows, becoming a contestant on Jeopardy. Country rover Tom Skinner caught up with a Pitt County man who knows what it's like to play America's ultimate game of trivia. Andy Kingsbury spends most of his time working as a radio producer in Greenville, but recently, after a very rigorous vetting process, the Winterville resident became a contestant on Jeopardy. It's very fast-paced. Everything's happening very fast and coming at you uh, at about a million miles an hour. Kingsbury traveled to Los Angeles in August to tape the two shows he appears on, and he says contestants aren't briefed on any of the questions or categories. The first time I saw them was when the tape was rolling and I was sitting there with my buzzer and I was going to try to answer them in a few seconds. And when they reeled off the first two or three, I, I said, I'm going to get in trouble because I have no idea about these ones. But then they filled it out. Well, maybe I have a fighting chance or I'll just uh, see what I can do. I'll just do my best. And Eddie's best on Thursday's episode of Jeopardy earned him $9,199 and an invite back on Friday's show. It's, 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 it makes for a very exhilarating, draining, uh, exhausting, but really, really fun day. It was very exciting, and uh, I'm glad I had the opportunity to do it. it and even after playing on America's Ultimate Trivia Game Show, Andy says he still has plenty of fight left in him for another game show. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to try to try my luck on another game show. The only problem is there aren't too many of them that are filming in Greenville or anything like that. So, so for now, Kingsbury is happy watching these two episodes of Jeopardy and critiquing his performance. In Greenville, Tom Skinner, The Country Rover. Kingsbury works at Atlantic Coast Communications in Greenville, which is a radio, internet, and television production company. The company provides production services for churches nationwide.